Hey, Todd Hallam, Sideshow FX. And what we have here is an animation I created that can be applied to your rubber hose character rig. And I'm going to show you in this video how to get your rig working with this animation. It's pretty straightforward, but there are some uh, rules you got to follow, and I've tried to make it as easy as possible to um, to link your rig to these data points. So what we have here, what you'll see when you download the project is the controllers. These are the controllers that represent the data, the motion data, and there we go in real time. And these are the points that you'll be attaching your rig to. Now there are more points than you're probably going to need but they're available, I've made them available in this animation should you want to try and experiment in using knees and elbows but for our purposes this is mostly going to be for rigging rubber hose uh, rigs to it so you won't really need the elbows and knees but they can also be used as guides what you see in the timeline uh, is three layers visible. Um, the bottommost layer is just a background layer. Uh, then we have a controller layer. And in the controller layer, this controls the visibility of the controllers and labels. There are also labels that you can turn on that go beside each of the controllers. Let me get so obviously head uh, head top base and neck base left shoulder left elbow left hand etc all the way down through the legs as well uh, you can use them as for guides or you can just leave the labels off and you can leave the controllers off to view your artwork cleanly as well and if you wanted to you can change the colors of these different sections and they are divided into sections uh, there's a head section uh, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. And uh, it just makes it e easier to follow. Also in the timeline, in our comp, is a link to layers. And these represent links that you will be pick whipping to. And I'll show you that in a second. And uh, what these refer to is under the hood, I have shied, and I'll maximize this. This is what's under the hood. This is the build of the entire system, the animation, the keyframes, and the controllers. So you don't really need to access it, and they are locked, so you won't need to uh, accidentally affect them in any way. So we're going to keep them shy for now because we don't really need to see them. That's what this system is for. Makes it nice and nice and clean. So let's say you've got a rig that you've already put together. Now you don't have to have a rig, a rubber hose rig built in advance. You can build the limbs as you as you go. You can build a, an arm limb and then link it to the controllers and then go do the other arm, that sort of thing. Uh, or you can have a character already created with rubber hose. And that's what I've got here. I've got a character that I created very quickly in rubber hose and some shapes. And I'm just going to select them all and copy and paste them into my controller sequence. There we go. Okay, so you can start anywhere you want. I'm going to start with uh, the left arm, and we'll uh, we'll get it going and and seeing how uh, how the whole process works. It helps when you've built a rig to label it correctly, and that way you're not going to get confused. So uh, the different parts that I have are left arm, left hand. Uh, and the 
the um, rubber hose is also labeled. The controllers for the rubber hose are labeled left arm wrist, left arm shoulder, etc. So, uh, and the same thing with left leg, right leg, and uh, the right arm there as well. And I also have a body and a head. And I have hands separate. And I'll explain that in a minute. Those are just shapes. They're not part of the rubber hose rig, but we can attach them. Okay, so we don't need to see everything all at once on your your character. So let's I'm gonna shut everything off for now and just work on the left arm. So there is rubber hose rig left arm. Now what we're going to do is we want to turn on the link to layers because these are the layers that have all of the animation data that we need to tie to our controllers. Oh, sorry, by the way, I'm going to turn off my other controllers that I don't need. The head, the legs, and the right arm. And I'm going to leave the left arm control visible. These are the three controls here. And I don't need the labels on for now. They're just there for convenience. So let's go to the link to layers. I'm going to lock this in place. So when I select another layer, it's not automatically going to jump to its effect controls. I'm going to select left wrist, P for property. And I'm going to Option Alt, click on the stopwatch to create an expression. I'm going to take the pick whip. Because this is the left arm wrist, I'm going to grab the pick whip and I'm going to pick whip over to the left <coughs> wrist layer, not the name of the left wrist, but the layer under left wrist. And let go and it will link itself to that property. But in addition, there's a little bit of extra code we have to put in here. And it is period two underscore comp left parentheses, left square bracket, zero comma zero, right square bracket, right parentheses. And then enter. And now you see that this left wrist from the rubber hose controller has jumped to that controller. And that'll work, that'll start working. Now the reason for that extra code there is the data, the animation data that I've created in this is actually exists in 3D space. So we need that extra bit of code to convert the 3D space to a 2D property, which is what the rubber hose rig is. It's a 2D property. So it needs to do that conversion. So all you really need to do is take this now and copy and, and keep that on your clipboard and paste. And I'll also make it available on the web page as well. So um, it makes it easier just to copy and paste from there as well. So that is the left wrist that is now tied to that controller point on our animation. We're going to do the same thing with left shoulder, position, option alt click, and pick whip over to the left shoulder, and then add in that code, and I'm going to paste it in. And there we go. And now we can just do a RAM preview. And there you go. We have our rubber hose arm working with the animation data. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the same thing for the right arm, but we'll go through it quickly. So there we go, we got the left and the right arm now working. As you can see, there can be some adjustments made with the rubber hose um, fine tuning uh, for the arm length and if you want tapering, that sort of thing. But because um, the arm length is going to need to fit the uh, data points of this animation, so it may affect the overall look of your character a little bit, but you can tweak it and move some anchor points around to modify it. So that's something you you may want to play with a little bit. But it is um, it is mostly um, uh, a tool to uh, 
be a jumping off point and get you going with some animation because walk cycles can be rather cumbersome to make and this really simplifies the process so there we go we got the uh, the two arms working we can move on to the legs now I'll leave those layers on for now so let's do the left the left leg and we're gonna show let's turn that off Turn the foot off for now, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so let's go back to the controllers at the top, the link to layers, keep it locked on there. And we'll go to the left ankle, position once again, same procedure, pick whip over to the left leg ankle, and paste in the extra code. Same thing with the hip. And paste the code. And there we go. And so you can see there might be some adjustment needed in the, on the hose length of this one as well. But that's easily done. And then I'll go ahead and quickly do the right leg. And there we have it. We now have the legs working along with the arms. We can move on to uh, putting the body in. Let me turn on the body layer. Now the body's going to reference, let me turn on the controllers, we'll turn off the lock for our effect controls for the link to layers and select controller because we want to see the head controllers. I'll shut off the right arm there and we'll zoom in here and you can see, I'll turn on the labels here. We have a uh, top of head, a head base, and a neck base. Now this is going to be dependent on how you've got your character designed, where exactly you're going to be able to uh, want to place uh, the body and the head for that matter. So you can move this around into place where you feel it should be. And then you want to move the anchor point because that's where the reference is. Our anchor point is pretty close to. I'm going to actually move this up so that anchor point, which you can see right here, pretty close to center point of the neck base. And we're going to use the neck base as our link. So with the body selected, go to link to layers, lock it. Select the body, position, alt option click, pick clip over to neck base. And the extra bit of 3D to 2D code. And there you go. The body will now follow. there we have it, the body is now following the animation. Good, got it working. And while we're at it, we must do the head while we're here. Let's turn on the head. And once again, we're going to try and place it where we want it. And this is something you can do, uh, design it to taste. And you can see my anchor point there. I'm going to line it up. And it's close to it because I had already worked this out previously. So that's why it's actually pretty close to where it should be. But you can move that anchor point wherever you need it to. Um, wherever it exists on your character, you can just drag it down using the Y key 
to the center point of the neck base and we'll do the same thing as we did with the body. Select position, use the expression pick whip over to neck base with the extra bit of code and I'm going to shut off my controller so we see it cleanly. Go to controller, shut off the neck, or sorry, uh, the head uh, controllers. Maximize this. Okay, now we'll play it. There he is, working in full motion. And of course, you can add in all the little bit of extra flair that you like. We could add in some uh, neck rotation. I had done some, uh, just a very quick neck rotation on this earlier. And it just gives him a little bit more, um, more life to him. Anything you can do to emphasize the motion, that needs a little bit of fine tuning on the motion, but you can see where he now looks like he's exerting himself a little bit more. So that's working. Now let's go down to the feet. Let's start with the left foot. Now, because feet being in contact with the floor, uh, at certain points and other points they're lifting off the floor, we want to try and uh, work with the foot when it's flat and level on the ground. And in the composition, I have two markers that you can use as a guide for where you want to position your foot. So here's the left foot alignment. And so we want to put this shoe and we're going to turn on the controllers for the left leg. We're working on the left leg here. Okay, there's our controllers. So these will work as the guides for where we're going to place the actual foot. So let's take the left foot and we want to try and align it as best we can. There we go. Roughly like that. I may want to shorten that um, leg up a little bit because I think I want to bring the foot up to there. Because I want that anchor point on my shoe. I didn't want it above the shoe there. Okay, so, and we can always shorten the, the leg length, and that's not going to affect this. Uh, through, through the rubber hose controls, rather. Okay, so we've got three points here we want to try and um, link to our animation parameters. And we're going to do that with, pu with puppet pins. So select the left foot, select our puppet pin control, and we're going to click right in the center point of the first one for the left toes and then the second one which is our left foot label and the third one which is our left ankle okay and pressing you twice I come down and we're gonna get rid of those keyframes we don't need the keyframes of the puppet pins but I'm gonna relay relabel these it's always a good idea to label them left toes left foot and left ankle. Okay, now we're going to lock our link to layers again so it stays in our effect palette. Option Alt click on left toes, grab the pick whip over to left toes. Let go, paste in our extra bit of code for the 3D to 2D and we'll do the left foot left foot goes to left foot, extra code, left ankle, pick whip to left ankle, paste the code, and that foot is now locked to those animation properties. So let me just close these. I'm just going to Show the bottom part of that. Turn this off. I'm going to turn my controllers off so we can see it cleanly. Now it's looking a little floppy with, with the foot, 
but you can always adjust that a little bit with fine tuning the puppet pins uh, and possibly doing some some starching with with the puppet pins as well, which I'm not going to bother doing here. But you can see the foot now follows and it bends with the foot. So I'm going to quickly do the right foot. feet working. Uh, just one word of note when I went through that quickly you may have noti not noticed that the placement is for the uh, for aligning the right foot is in the second marker here which is called right foot align. So that's the position that you will place your foot and do your puppet pin points on the control points. So there we have the character in full motion. We just need to do uh, some hands. And I'll quickly show you how we can do that. So let's turn on our left hand. And it doesn't matter which frame you start working on. You just want to make it align. Now for this, you're going to find it easier to turn off the controller for the rubber hose. So let's just the left wrist controller. Let's shut that off so we can see better what we're doing. Now I'm just going to line this. That's pretty close to where I want it. And we can turn on the controller for the left wrist, which is on the left arm control visibility, as you can see there. And we want the anchor point of the left hand to be aligned pretty close to that. Now you're going to find that you will need some adjusting with this after you've aligned it. It's easy enough to adjust just moving the anchor point tool will put it back into place exactly where you need it. But let's just let's just say that that's good for now. It's it's off a little bit, but let's see how close we get when we line it up. And this one's a little easier to do because all we need to do is with our parent controls listed here, we're going to pick whip over to the left wrist. We'll turn that one back on just for... Actually, no, I'll leave it off. And I'll turn off my controller so I can see clearly what it is I'm dealing with. And let's do a RAM preview and let's see how well it has lined to it. So that, that works pretty well. It's lined right up with it. So that's working well. Alright, I'll quickly do the right hand. character fully working with the animation data. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Once you uh, uh, do one or two of them, it becomes uh, rather routine. You know what to do, just as long as you make sure that you are lining up with the correct um, animation layer that's identified here so it, of course it, it's pretty imperative that you label your own character rig um, fairly well and organized so that it makes this process easier. So hopefully you guys can make use of this. It may not work for every character. Uh, you may have, you likely would have to do some modifications to your design or the or after you have linked the layers you may have to move things around just slightly to make it fully work the way you want but it's uh, certainly going to get you uh, going on a walk cycle which a lot of people seem to have a bit of difficulty in, in getting right so hopefully this animation will get you going and I'm hoping to create a series of these so I'll be doing different kinds of walks uh, different kinds of gates and limps and uh, get into doing uh, running and walk start and walk stop that those sorts of things that's the idea so if there's enough interest in this I'll keep going and creating these animations and making these uh, uh, the data available for you guys to to link to uh, 
uh, I'd be very interested to see what people come up with and what projects they have been able to use this animation in. It'd be a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is clear and uh, keep your eye out on the website for some more animations.